Please, fortune teller meister, tell me if this channel is ever going to be as big as I wish. Jimmy, calm down. I'll take care of it. Ah, yes. What does it say? You must send out a whole bunch of copyright claims because the only way your channel will succeed is if it's the only channel on YouTube. What? I don't believe that. <laughs> yeah, I was just messing with you. The card says that your channel will become as big as you wish. Oh, that's great news. Thank you, Psychic Meister. Um, how do I pay you? Ah, don't mention it. Mutugavu. Servus Freunde, my name is Jimmy Cage and I am Dennis, the Body Meister. We have reviewed more than 350 Indian movies, including almost 100 Malayalam ones, and today we want to talk about Tenma Veen Combat. Once a month, all of our awesome patrons and YouTube members have the chance to vote on our next movie review. This time the options were all about Malayalam classics. Godfather, Zandesham and the winner, Ten Mavin Combat. The next poll is already up as well and since we have loved Sridhar Raghavan's Anandun, we want to watch and review another one of his films. So the options are Badlapur, Ekhazina T and Johnny Gada. If you want to vote each month as well, all you have to do is become a patron at patreon.com slash the Jimmy Cage or a member here on YouTube. Ten Mavin Kombat, which apparently translates to On the Branch of a Honey Sweet Mango Tree, is a 1994 Malayalam language romantic comedy drama that was written and directed by Priya Darshan. It stars an all-star cast, including Mohan Lal, Nedu Mudivenu, Shobana, Srinivasan and Kavyur Ponama. It won two National Film Awards, Best Cinematography for K.V. Anand and Best Production Design for Zabu Cyril, as well as five Kerala State Film Awards. And it's the third Priya Dashan classic that's reviewed on this channel. We watched Chitram together and I have also watched and reviewed Kalapani. Tenma Veen Combat was a huge success when it came out and it's easy to see why it has become a beloved Malayalam classic. It has that nice mixture of chill comedy, lovely romance, some heavy melodrama and even one big action brawl and it features the already mentioned all-star cast. It also showcases beautiful locations, has a wonderful cinematography and a few nice songs. So Jimmy, what did you think about this movie? Overall, I thought that it's a lovely film with some parts and elements that I really loved and some that are a bit lacking or just not really my cup of tea. As a whole, it was a charming good time. Of course, you kind of have to know what kind of movie this is and that it will be quite long and really slow paced with a story that's rather simple, but it has enough highlights to keep you entertained. And while it's not completely my kind of film, for that I just couldn't connect to the story enough, it was nevertheless quite lovely. How about you? Well, I didn't like it as much as you did. It's all right, a decent movie. I think for me, it's almost dividable into two parts or three thirds because I really loved the first half or so. But after that, the movie lost me. It became repetitive, almost a bit boring, and it drags out everything. But it, of course, has much to offer too. The cinematography, which like we said won a national award, is definitely one of the film's strong points. Even though the quality of our print was just okay, the movie looks really beautiful and like we noticed in Chitram, filmmaker Priya Dashan is adding some nice cinematic touches, showing a particular strong moment multiple times, using strong focus shifts, creative camera angles or just some beautiful lighting. The camera work also works hand in hand with the rural setting that without question must be very nostalgic for a Malayali audience and for us it just delivers this wonderful atmosphere, especially during the parts where the movie becomes kind of a road movie, which reminds me that we should probably talk about the story. The story revolves around Manikyan, Krishnan and Katumbi and the love triangle between them. Manikyan works for Krishnan and they are like brothers. And then there's also Apakala, a servant of Krishnan. He's a jealous swindler who has a rivalry with Manikyan. It's important to know that Manikyan and Kartumbi fall in love, but Krishnan, who thinks that they don't like each other, falls in love with Kartumbi as well. There are a lot of trials and tribulations in this story, and an important one is that Krishnan believes that Kartumbi has the same feelings 
he has. Like we have seen multiple times now, Tenma Veen Komba takes its time to introduce us to this world and these characters. And I really enjoyed that. We get to know the relationships and dynamics and just how life in that small village works. I agree, and it does it with ease and the pleasant feel-good factor. The movie's funny, it has a good drive, and you like these people. By far my favorite segment of the entire film is when Manikian and Katumbi are spending a few days together just by themselves. This is where the movie resembles a classic rom-com the most. It's fun, it's romantic, and there are definitely some sparks. It's my favorite part as well. It's this road movie feeling that hooked me right away. This formula just works. How they arrive at different places, how they fool around and get closer, how Kartumbi teases him with all the Mutu Gavu stuff. And it works so well because you know that Krishnan doesn't know about them but will eventually get to know it. So something dark is coming and we know it. I want to highlight the scene where Manikyan finally finds out what Mutugavu means. He drops the water pitcher and runs towards Katumbi. This is such an incredibly awesome scene. It has so much weight and like I said, Mohan Lal and Shobana are great together. We've actually seen them together in two movies already, Mani Chitratal and Narodikatu. Mohan Lal is really great in Tenma Bin Combat. I just loved how annoyed he was all the time in the beginning, how he had to get along with Krishnan and the two unannounced guests who he must drive around in the cart. Mohan Lal is really good and like I said in our review of Chitram, which is my favorite Mohan Lal performance alongside Kiridam, which is of course much more serious, I like him most and I think he's best when he can be funny and loose, when he's able to bring out his inner child. The delivery of the dialogue, the timing, the facial expressions, it's quite wonderful and I actually laughed out loud several times, especially when it gets a bit sillier like Manikian being tied to a tree. It's really a funny movie and I was even able to get some of the linguistic puns like this whole who is who misunderstanding when Manikyan wants to throw Kartumbi out of his cart. We have seen Nido Murivenu in a lot of movies by now but I think this is by far his biggest role that we have seen him in, which was great. Yes, all the characters are put through an emotional roller coaster in this movie, so everyone who's funny in the first half becomes serious in the second and I think Nedo Moody does a great job in displaying that change. I didn't like the second half as much though, because most of the story builds on these misunderstandings and when that's not really used for comedy but for melodrama, it gets a bit tedious after a while for my taste. Definitely, I had so many problems with the second half and I agree with the misunderstandings and errors. It's tedious and annoying. The movie loses steam and the drama and the emotions were just too much for me. Everything's dour and everybody's miserable and it's like nothing happens, things just keep repeating itself. And Shobana is pushed to the background almost completely in the second half. Yes, her place gets taken by Srinivasan, who comes to the fore. His apakala is kind of the wild card in this movie and as much as I didn't like the second half, it's fascinating how the dynamic shifts between Manikyan, Krishnan and apakala. That's true, but there's also this very small side plot about a policeman who is also this villain. It's so small, you can't even really call it a side plot. And in the end, it's only really used to give a reason for an epic brawl. At first, I didn't mind because I thought this would be the thing that turned Krishnan around, make him see who's really his friend. But surprisingly, it doesn't really have any effect on the story or characters at all, which is a shame and kind of a wasted opportunity. But hey, uh, spoiler alert. We get a happy ending and everything's resolved through one scene that comes out of nowhere. And it's not like we don't know these kind of deus ex machina endings by now, but still... Ugh. It's a bit cheap, yes, but I can live with it. The movie's fine and uh, by the way I love the song Manam Telinye, but overall I was a bit disappointed to be honest. Well, I still think it's a really lovely film that hits pretty much all the emotional beats a film of that era wanted to hit. Fair enough. So, what would we say in German about Tenma Wien Kombat? Tenma Wien Kombat ist ein charmanter Film, der in der ersten Hälfte unheimlich unterhaltsam ist. Danach geht der Geschichte, die vor allem auf Missverständnissen und Irrtümern basiert, aber ein wenig die Luft aus. I give Tenma Wien Kombat 7 out of 10. It's more like 7.1, but I don't do that. For me, it's 6 out of 10. It's more like 6.2, but I don't do that either. D.
Did you know that the playback singer Sri Kumar, who also sings all the songs in Tenma Vin Combat, has sung over 35,000 songs for films in Malayalam, Tamil, Hindi, Kannada and Telugu? What? Didn't know that. Is that even possible? <laughs> so, what are your thoughts about Tenma Vin Combat? Leave a comment. You can hit me up on Twitter, Instagram, Letterbox, and also on Patreon, simply at the Jimmy Cage. And you can hit me up on Twitter at the Buddymeister. And as always, if you enjoyed this episode, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, whatever you like. And make sure you hit that bell for all we have to tell. Mm -hmm.